The Roads to Carbon Neutral, presented by Total. Welcome to The Roads to Carbon Neutral. This series examines how countries, companies and communities have set a bold ambition to tackle climate change and achieve net zero carbon emissions by the second half of this century. Well, in this edition, we focus on the power of the sun and evolution of solar energy. Coming up. We discuss the role of solar power in the mission to reduce carbon emissions. We have to increase fourfold this increasing capacity to get to the 14,000 gigawatts of solar that we need in 2050. This will be a revolution and this revolution is coming. Emmeline in Singy and Cozy reports on innovations in the solar tech space. I examine the growth opportunities for Africa's off-grid market. Plus, we assess how solar emerges as a viable solution for improving access to clean and affordable energy. begin with the key trends within the solar sector. We've gathered some expert voices from global organizations and the world of academia to help explain the role of solar power in our energy transition away from hydrocarbons. The power of the sun and its life-giving properties has enabled Earth to flourish. Learning to respect and harness its energy has been an ongoing pursuit. As long ago as 200 BC, the Greek mathematician Archimedes calculated that the use of polished bronze could direct the sun's rays. The heat generated was used as a weapon to set fire to enemy ships. In 1905 came a breakthrough. Albert Einstein published a white paper on how the photoelectric effect worked. He reasoned light was made up of tiny packets of energy called photons. Now this laid the foundation for the solar panel that we know today. And for this, he earned a Nobel Prize. The principle of photovoltaic energy played its part in the space race too. But solar as an energy source wouldn't enter the mainstream until well into the 1980s, when the first one megawatt power solar park was built in California by Arco Solar. We've come a long way since then. At present, globally, the generation of electricity by renewable sources is led by hydro and wind power. Solar is significantly lower by some thousand terawatts. The role of solar in achieving net zero is critical. Originally, solar was installed in only a handful of countries, and we are seeing more and more countries adopting solar. To give you an idea of the scale, 10 years ago, only 20 gigawatts were installed worldwide. And last year, in the middle of the pandemic, we had more than 140 gigawatts installed, which is a seven-time growth in just one decade. The growth and the diversification is, is very, very dramatic. Country data shows China dominates in the use of solar, followed by the United States of America and India. But this will change. India is set to experience the largest increase in energy demand of any country worldwide over the next 20 years. As its population grows and its economy continues to develop, solar will be an important part of its energy mix. Any new technologies that is not viable, if we do it, in China, China would be able to bring the cost down because of economic scale. And that's exactly what happened with solar PV. When over the last 10 years, the cost of solar PV has dropped by 90%. It's because you have such a complete manufacturing system in China and such a big market that it brought the cost down. And this would benefit the rest of the world. So solar energy is now a competitive source of energy, but if we want it to be even bigger, uh, we'll face some new challenges. So because solar power uh, farms all produce at noon, in Europe we have a problem, because in Europe the peak hour is in the evening. 
So we have to find a way to store this energy, to manage the demand response or to shift the load. And so for this, we still need some technological innovation because big batteries do not last for so many hours. In the next decade or so, we'll start seeing the commissioning of all the plants. And by that time, we need to have as an industry a position and a process of how, for instance, solar modules are going to be uh, recycled because we are going to start seeing billions of solar panels that will need to be recycled or will need to be retired. So that's something that can become a challenge for the industry. The transition from the laboratory to the mass market has accelerated in the last decade. The next version of the solar cell is a few microns of silicon rather than the heavy and the fragile cells of 30 years ago. Significant gains in efficiency are happening alongside a considerable drop in manufacturing costs. All this combined have helped open the market further. Huge plants built in emerging market nations like Morocco or under construction in Australia's deserts show a confidence solar can deliver reliable energy to communities and cities. We have to increase fourfold this increased capacity to get to the 14,000 gigawatts of solar that we need in 2050 to in line with the scenario that we put in place for ensuring carbon neutrality by mid-century. What we see in the world is that the solar capacities in 2010 were 44 gigawatts. In 2020, they were 700 gigawatts. And what we'll see for the future, in 2050, it will be 6,000 gigawatts of installed renewable capacities. So the trend is phenomenal and Total wants to be part of it. As we've heard, solar will play a profound part in the global shift from hydrocarbons. Total, a broad multi-energy company, has a global renewable strategy which actively contributes to this clean energy transition. It's an integral part of the company's ambition to get to net zero by 2050. Well, to discuss this further, I'm joined by Vice President of Operations for Renewables at Total, Remy Bourgeois. Remy, hi there. So how far is Total on its renewable journey? So Total has been active in renewables since 2011. Since that time, we have extensively increased our installed capacity in renewables, going from 0.8 gigawatt in 2017 to more than 7 gigawatt by end of 2020. But we are not going to stop there. Our plan is to be at 35 gigawatt by end of 2025 and by 100 giga by end of 2030. Our objective is to be amongst the top five renewables energy company. And Remy, how does solar contribute to the decarbonization of Total's assets? We have recently solarized our 50th industrial site in Total, representing more than 50 megawatts. We have developed since 2017 a program aiming at solarizing our service stations, and so far, we've been able to achieve this on more than 2,000 service stations. What solutions can Total offer its customers to help them decarbonize? Two examples I want to share with you. The first one being L'Oréal. We've been able to accompany them in their decarbonation journey by installing a 1.5 megawatt carport on one of their facilities. This is the beginning of a new adventure with them. In parallel to this, we have also recently announced a corporate PPA with Orange, and we supply them with clean electricity through solar installation of 80 megawatts, allowing them to provide 100 gigawatts per year for a PPA that has a duration of 20 years. And how is Total enabling global communities to access energy? It is a must do, frankly speaking. We are developing some off-grid solutions in order to provide some efficient, sustainable, clean, affordable uh, energy. We are leveraging on our position in order to distribute some solar lanterns and systems to people living in emerging countries for which the access to energy is very expensive. So far, we've been able 
to reach more than 17 million people. That's an impressive figure. Thank you very much. The integration of solar energy will continue at pace. Both small-scale innovations and massive global projects will play their part. Next, Emmeline and Singian Cozy reports on the inventive ways solar technology is being used to power our everyday lives. The technology is always evolving around the size, shape, weight and energy capacity of solar cells. Around the world, innovators have taken advantage of this and applied the latest generation of solar tech in several creative ways. Integrating solar technology into our homes will become more common. Sun acts as indoor solar panel to become a direct source of light. Designed by Marianne van Albel to be hung in windows, the sun harvests and stores enough energy throughout the day to light up a room at night. Researchers at Rice University in the US are taking solar panels to the next level. Printable, paintable and stretchable. This thin red layer on the surface of a polymer is the photovoltaic device. It's a new technology to enable solar panels to go in different directions. UK-based Thermosolar Hive has found a way to serve the queen and keep bees buzzing. Inbuilt solar panels provide clean energy to control the hive's internal temperature, humidity and acoustic frequencies. These measures protect them from parasites and allow the colony to produce honey year-round. For communities frustrated by interrupted electricity supply in South Africa and Lesotho, the bright sparks at Solar Turtle can help. Transformed containers flip open to become solar energy hubs, serving 300 to 400 households with electricity. The public can hire bottle batteries, simply plug in and charge. One this size powers a television up to 20 hours. The company recently launched smaller versions of their concept. These kiosks are designed to serve locals, powering small items like phones when battery runs low. To understand the true power of solar at scale, I went to speak with Laurent Becerra, who leads a Tatao division which builds and operates large-scale solar plants globally. So Laurent, how has Tatao strategy evolved over time to develop and operate solar plants across the world? The first major element, of course, is our ambition of the carbon neutrality by 2050. So today, the group has an ambition of 35 gigawatts in operation by 2025. To give you an example, 3 gigawatts is roughly more than 1 million of households supplied by electricity. We want to be present in the full value chain, development, engineering, financing, construction, and operation. And could you tell me about some of your major international projects? Let's talk about Middle East and Qatar, where we are building today one of the largest solar farms, 800 megawatts which is the largest one in terms of bifacial technology. This solar farm represents 1,400 soccer fields. It will reduce 26 million of CO2 along the duration of the project. This one will be built by the first quarter of 2022. Just in time for the World Cup. Tatao's solar portfolio is vast and includes 3 gigawatts in operation in India. Spain and the Iberia region provides a pipeline of 5 gigawatts which can power roughly 2 million households. There are four projects in Japan, both fully built and in construction. The energy capacity of 150 megawatts is approximate to powering 60,000 households. Plus, in Chile, a 200 megawatt solar farm under construction, one of the biggest in the country. Tatao are also helping a number of major companies lower their carbon footprint with a range of solar-powered rooftop and ground-mounted solutions. Which technologies and innovations are driving the future of your solar plants, both in relation to the design and operation of them? We have a key innovation today, which is using the two-face of the photovoltaic module to generate electricity. This will improve by 10 to 15% the generation of electricity. The next innovation will be type of module which allow to go more efficiently and more quickly to build solar farms. And secondly, 
of course, digitalization of operation will help on the efficiency as well. There's a challenge of the battery storage. The cost of this battery will decrease. We will be able to have more and more renewable assets, which will be less and less intermittent. This will be a revolution, and this revolution is coming. Thank you very much, Laurent. As Emmeline and Lauren discussed, these massive scale projects are helping nations shape their energy futures. Constant innovation, 35 plus years of experience and thousands of solar and storage deployments have made SunPower one of the leaders in the American renewable energy sector. This partnership with Total began back in 2011. To date, SunPower has deployed 17 million solar panels worldwide for residential and commercial use. For the company, it's an exciting time for the future of solar. SunPower's commercial business has been in operation for over 20 years. Over that time, we've built projects in over 35 states, interconnected into 75 different grids, and worked with hundreds of customers to deliver over a gigawatt of power in the United States. These customers could be school districts, water districts, military bases, warehouses, data centers, museums. The University of California school system is a great example, and in particular, University of California at Merced. SunPower built a solar and storage solution across multiple sites in order to enable UC Merced to meet their net zero goal ahead of schedule in 2020. The project at the San Francisco Exploratorium is a special one for me. I see the fog, the rain, the wind. SunPower's panels are able to withstand all of that and produce energy even in the most harsh conditions. I've been in solar for over 15 years and I couldn't be more excited than I am right now. Feels like we're at the ground floor again and a big part of that is the introduction of storage in combination with solar. That is gonna be the key driver to achieving our net zero goals. Architects are embracing how solar technology can be further integrated into our habitats. These structures push the boundaries of design and engineering while helping to create a more sustainable world. American company Pavilion has mastered the art of flexible solar. The practical applications for these textiles are endless from medical emergency response tents to outdoor canopies for street lighting and to provide auxiliary power for the US Embassy building in London. The Dutch architects behind the Spiral Tower hope to turn their concept into a modern day landmark. The design combines 360 degree views with the kinetic energy of a Ferris wheel. It's powered by solar panels installed in the mast and a windmill at the top of the tower. The Princess Elizabeth Antarctica is situated at the end of the world. The Belgian research station is a zero emissions habitat. To maximize exposure to 24 hour sunlight during summer months, rooftop photovoltaic solar panels help generate electricity. Thermal panels melt snow and heat water for the living quarters. And to survive the dark days of winter, energy is stored in batteries and supplemented by wind power. The potential for solar power in Africa could have a huge impact on the continent. Electricity consumption is relatively low in Africa. Data from 2019 shows Africa's 1.3 billion population used 600 kilowatts of electricity per person per year. This is less than 6% of an American's average use. By 2050, Africa will be home to 2.4 billion people. As the demographics change, so will energy demand. In Africa today, 50% of the population in Sub-Saharan Africa, they do not have electricity. The amount of solar power plants in entire Africa, is about five gigawatts, is equal to Netherlands, what Netherlands have from solar. You, I'm sure you agree with me that Africa is much uh, sunnier than Netherlands and much, much bigger than Netherlands. And I expect the access to electricity problem in Africa will be broken through making use of the solar revolution. We will see very good stories uh, from Africa very soon in terms of the solar penetration. 
This optimism about solar power comes at a time of rapid change in Africa. There is an entrepreneurial spirit here, both established businesses and startups working towards a bright future. Total Carbon Neutrality Ventures, or TCNV, has been supporting some of them. Total Carbon Neutrality Ventures invests globally. Our focus is energy, mainly along renewables. African continent represents a, a key uh, demographic for us, and so it's very important for us that our solutions that we provide are global. And therefore, we are also investing in startups, high potential ones across the continent, which are able to deliver energy access for all, following the UN targets of energy access for all by 2030. When Total Carbon Neutrality Ventures first invested in PEG Africa in 2018, they had just over 40,000 customers. Right now, in 2021, they have over 100,000 customers. Their operations at that time were based in Ghana and they had just expanded to Côte d'Ivoire. Now they also have operations in Senegal and in Mali. PEG Africa provides financing for life-changing and useful products such as solar home systems. We believe in companies like PEG Africa because of the impact that they create on the communities where they operate. When we were doing our due diligence on PEG Africa, we had the opportunity to travel to Ghana and we visited a fishing village that was 30 minutes off the highway, walking through the forest. And when we got into the community, it was a community of about, let's say, 30, 40 families. They were so remote that it was unlikely that the grid will ever get to them, even in 20 years. Therefore, solutions like solar home systems provide the opportunity for families like this to get on the energy ladder by being able to gain access to electricity for the first time. Zola is another company making a real impact with its solar solutions. Since we invested in Zola in 2016, Zola's operations have grown from Tanzania and Rwanda to distribution in more than 10 countries. They have now impacted more than a million people. The company's really, I mean, remarkably grown from solving a, a rural off-grid problem in Africa to solving really in the energy access challenge across the, across the globe. We're powering a, a, a COVID clinic in the Amazon rainforest now that will form the basis of a, of a mini grid we consider to be one of the first smart battery solutions in the world uh, and we've grown it uh, since then. Effectively the way it works is relatively straightforward. You, you put a, a building block into your home, it's a, it's a smart battery into your home and then you connect it to any energy source our products do for our, our, for our customers. They, they act as the grid for them in an environment where there is no grid. Worldwide, approximately 800 million people live without access to energy and more than 1.1 billion without a regular supply. Total Access to Energy Solutions, also known as Tate's, focuses its operation on providing solar power to some of the most remote locations on the planet. Total has a triple bottom line when it comes to access to energy. First is to uh, bring access to energy to 25 million people by 2025, reduce and uh, minimize the environmental impacts of such solutions, and then it's also to be profitable. We are in line with the sustainable development goal number seven of the United Nations, which is to bring uh, access to modern, sustainable, affordable, and reliable energy. Total has been developing its own range of products and so we are selling solar, uh, solar lamps and solar kits which can include also radio, solar bulbs, uh, TV, fridge and fan. So we did a, a life cycle analysis to understand better what is harmful when it comes to a, a solar product from the moment that you design it through the extraction of the material until the moment you distribute it to the last mile. And what we found out was very interesting. We found out actually that 90% of the carbon footprint of our solar products come from the production of the components itself. So Total has been partnering with, uh, with companies in Sub-Saharan Africa to develop pair pilots for products to be uh, more sustainable by uh, increasing their lifespan expectancy, by uh, doing some eco design. So it's just expanding the lifespan of the battery and also second is that we are working on the repairability of the product. Total is partnering with Acceleran. This company is uh, developing some innovative solution when it comes to storage technology. We actually develop some entrepreneurial partnerships in a displacement camp and refugee camps in Kenya based on the repair of the product itself.
Total is also partnering with My Jewel Box, the company that has affiliates in uh, Burkina Faso and Benin, and uh, who is distributing solar kits, but has also been developing an expertise in uh, how to make a scalable repair of a product and how to make sure that they can have a second life. Since two years ago, we are working uh, with Total uh, to activate an overfill of opportunity of um, renewable energy business is in Africa. More than 90% of the solar goods import in Africa are not produced locally. What we are doing is quite simple. We are adding, creating this local value for local technicians, for engineers, to have these high skills to monitor, to check, and to give uh, like a second life cycle uh, to the product. And to a final new startup unveiling its first project in East Africa. This flat pack solar thermal collector is a world first, easy to assemble without need for professional installation. The Solaris kit converts sunlight to heat water. At the moment, the forecast is, is that the solar thermal market in Africa alone is going to grow by 50 fold over the next 10 years. And if we realize that potential, uh, that means the African solar hot water market will be as large as the European solar hot water market, which is the second largest in the world. Uh, but to really unlock that potential, there was a real need for simple, practical, affordable solutions uh, to really gain that traction. Uh, and that's where we want to come in. So we'll be installing approximately 100 of our solar collectors into Kigali, Rwanda where they'll be used for households and to businesses. While we're focusing on East Africa at the start, our solution is really focused on the entire continent where we see enormous growth. But following that, we're also looking into Southeast Asia and Central America as well. It's hoped the success of all these projects could serve as an example for the rest of Africa and other developing nations. The ambition knows no bounds. Back to you, Emma. Well, that's all for this edition of The Rose to Carbon Neutral. To view further content from this series, visit rosetocarbonneutral.com. Goodbye, until next time. The Rose to Carbon Neutral, presented by Total.